So for this video, I got to thank Lectron for sending me the J1772 to Tesla charging adapter. So it says power your Tesla with the J1772 charger. Lectron makes excellent products. If you look at the three videos that I've already posted, I show the installation of the V-Box and I also show how you can use the portable charger, which is pretty much self-explanatory. So the reason why you have this is just in case you want to use a Tesla with the Lectron, because see, this is what it is. Elon Musk, you can talk bad about him. You can make whatever fun of him you want. You could say that the guy's evil. You can call him whatever you want to call him. The reality is Tesla makes excellent decisions when it comes to electric vehicles. One of the decisions they made was having a single small connector that was capable of AC and DC charging. And that was brilliant because while the rest of the industry was fumbling around with standards such as uh, CCS and uh, the J1772 standard, which is basically half the size of the whole CCS system because it doesn't have the, the DC uh, fast charging ports at the bottom if you just have the J1772. The reality is Tesla said what we'll do is we'll make a single connection that has the ability to do AC and DC charging. So what this basically is, is an adapter that if you have a J1772 charger at your house, you can charge your Tesla using it at your house. And this way you can avoid high fees at the superchargers if there are high fees, depending upon where you are, what state you are. And this allows you to plug directly into just about any of the Teslas. This will work with the Tesla Model S, the Tesla Model X, the Y, the 3, and the Cybertruck. And this gives you DC fast charging if you have that ability. Like if you have level 3, but you have a J1772. Um, let me actually clarify that. The J1772 plugs into this side, and then it will plug directly into your Tesla. Your Tesla is capable of DC fast charging, but most houses don't have it uh, equipped. What Tesla is doing right now is in order to service people who have J1772 and have CCS, is they are adding a second plug to their superchargers. And um, now if you have a Tesla, you'll charge with a plug head like this. But if you have a car that uses um, CCS, then they have a plug for CCS. But the, the Tesla standard, which they use, which is called NAX for the most part, this is what that looks like. So if I have a Tesla in my yard, I can plug this into my J1772 and then plug this into the Tesla. And within about six hours to seven hours tops, that car will go from zero to three hundred miles or whatever the max charge is on that car so once again let me thank Lectron for giving us such quality products if you are looking for such products because you have a hyundai a kia a ford or a gm product or whatever you got take a look at the Lectron products that i'm showing off and if you look in this video you'll see a lot of Lectron products that are tagged if you buy any of them, I'm very certain that you'll be happy with them because the, the simple fact is the future is electric whether you like it or not. So this is a small follow-up to the video I did about the Electron EV charger. Here in my garage, I got my Cadillac over here, but you know what's more important than a Cadillac is books and knowledge. You need as much knowledge as you can get. So basically, <laughs> jokes aside, the Electron EV Charger V-Box, I had it wired um, into a uh, NEMA 1450, so therefore it's able to put out 40 amps of charge. If you have it hardwired to your circuit breaker, you'll be able to get the full 48 amps. And they also, Electron sells more powerful chargers if you have a house that can take it. So as you can see, we're charging at 226 volts. We've been charging for about seven minutes. Uh, we're at 40 amps, and as you can see outside, it's pretty cold. That's why I sound like I do, 55.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, if I were to take you past this wire to my car's charge port, which you probably can't see too well, the car is charging just nicely. And uh, basically, it's getting its juice. So the reality is, there's a lot of people who 
don't believe in electric cars. There's a lot of people who hate electric cars and this, that, and that. But the reality is the way this country is moving, the way the technology is moving, everybody's going to be in an electric car or a hybrid of some type. So you'll probably have a plug-in hybrid or an electric car. The uh, bottom line is um, it's coming. One way or another, it's coming. They're passing laws against gasoline cars. And, and that's just the reality of the situation. So um, I plug this car in right now. It is uh, 8... 24 it's been charging for a couple of minutes and uh this car will be finished charging back to a hundred percent of charge or a hundred percent of whatever the maximum battery capacity is because you can change the settings in certain cars and you can also tell the car when you want it to charge and when you don't want it to charge but uh, for the most part, uh, by the time I would wake up in the morning, the car is 100% fully charged. And for anybody who's like, oh, yeah, well, you shouldn't charge. I, me personally, I believe in charging the car outside of the house, away from the house. I don't want the car inside a garage or inside a house. Because once again, technology is fickle. You never know if something could possibly happen. But if anything does happen, there's enough space between my house and the car where if anything did happen, God forbid there was a fire, I wouldn't really have to worry about it. And the thing about it is it wouldn't be able to burn down my house because I have fire suppression systems. But that's about it. That's all I really had to say for this video right here. So um, once again, this is just an update for the Lectron EV charger. The next time I do a video, I'm going to try to get a Tesla in here so that I can show you the Tesla adapter. To be continued.